everyone in this tutorial we will learn about molecule led suit of data sets building machine learning model for science has several key challenges and one challenge is finding a good data set this challenge is compounded by other factors like a limited availability of label data a wide range of outputs to predict a large heterogeneity in input futures and so on by large heterogeneity in input futures i mean that for example you can represent a molecule as a graph or as a properties of its atoms and bonds or as a properties of its chemical composition and so on so the number of the choice of the number of possible input futures are like very high so the molecule led suit of data sets are a collection of scientific data sets which helps in which helps in building and testing scientific machine learning models for various purposes the original molecule led suit had 17 data sets which mostly focus on molecular properties and over the last years it has evolved into a broader collection of scientific data sets which can help in facilitating broad use and development of scientific machine learning tools it is one of the most powerful features of deep chem these data sets are integrated with the rest of the deep chem suit so that you can conveniently access these through functions in dc.molnet sub module the full documentation of molecule led suit is available at this place at this location and the molecule led suit was introduced in the 2018 paper molecule led a benchmark for molecular machine learning so now let's get started in using molecule led suit of data sets in deep chem from deep chem so to use deep chem in colab you need to first install it and i also installed rd kit library which helps in futurization of molecules it is used for this demonstration purposes rd kit library and let's import deep chem here are two small things which i would like to give attention to i am setting the deep chem environment variable deep chem data directory as the current directory so what happens when i set the deep chem data directory as the current directory is that each time a data set gets fetched from the cloud it gets stored in the current location otherwise it go, gets stored in a temporary directory and when the machine is restarted the directory gets lost and you have to download it again and i am also enabling logging so logging can help a lot in finding bug in find in debugging purposes so okay let's do a quick overview of the different type of data sets available in molecule net suit we will break the data sets into different categories and more details of the categories can be available can be found at the documentation link and the first category is the quantum mechanical data sets the molecule as quantum mechanical data sets contain various quantum mechanical property prediction task then we have the physical chemistry data sets which contain a collection of variety of task for predicting various physical properties of molecules like for example you can predict the log solubility of log solubility of a molecule in water and so on the chemical reaction data sets can be used for computational retrosynthesis or forward synthesis applications the biochemical or biophysical data sets can be used for measuring things like binding affinity of compounds to proteins so this can be used very much in protein modeling applications the molecular data sets catalog data set contain no associated property beyond the ross ross miles formula or structure of the molecule these type of data sets can be used for generative modeling task or unsupervised learning purposes physiology data sets measures the physiological properties of how molecules interact with human patients and the structural biology data set contain 3d structures of macro molecules along with their associated properties the microscopy data set contain microscopy image data sets 
typically of cell lines and these data sets were added later to the molecule net so the material property data set contains properties of various materials which like the surface and the adsorption energy of materials the formation energy of crystals and so on to load a molecule net data set we need to invoke the loader function the loader function takes the form dc dot mol net dot load x where x is the data set which you need to load so there are like a 42 molecule net loaders the 44 42 different data sets like for example the for example by putting in dc dot mol net dot load zinc 50 we'll load the zinc 15 data set and by putting in platinum absorption you can load the platinum absorption data set so there are like 42 such data sets available with deep chem we will try an example using the delani data set first i am loading the delani data set and uh, we will come into this future exit splitter and transformers in a moment so the loader function returns a tuple of arguments they are task data sets and transformers let's walk through each of these and explain what we get task is a list of task names associated with the data set many data sets in molecule that are multitask that is given a data set multiple labels are associated with it and which can correspond to different prediction tasks that is multiple tasks associated with uh, with the data set so the task says what are the tasks associated with the data set and for this data set we have only one task associated with it that is the the task associated with delani data set is that it measures log solubility of a molecule in moles per liter the next field written by the loader function is data sets data set is again a tuple of three data set objects which are the train validation and testing objects so we see that we have like three tuples and we now have three data sets objects the training validation and test sets we will see what information each contains by printing a representation of them so yeah here it says that the train data set is of the type disk data set object in case you are not sure what is a disk data set object you can refer the previous tutorial in which we have shared about the different types of data sets available in deep chem the next thing which it contains is that it contains an x attribute the x attribute has holds the futurized data point so you can say that you can see that uh, say you can access a point and the first the tenth data point is a convolution molecule object produced by dc dot feed dot convolution molecule futurizer we will say more about how to control the choice of futurization shortly and we see that it has got a y attribute which represents the labels and 902 suggests that there are like 902 data points available in this data set and the weight w stands for weight which says that the weight associated with each data point a weight for a data point represents the importance which is to be given to the data point for example uh, data points with high weights will be given more importance during training and data points with a weight of zero will not be included much in the training the ids are like the index of the data set now the last attribute which a loader function returns is the transformers a transformer is a list of transformer objects that were applied during pre-processing purposes say in our case we have used the normalization transformers for example for any machine learning application we used to transform the data set like 
apply a min max scaling or a z scaling of the futures in our case we have used a normalization transformer now we will come into these three things futurizer splitter and transformers so uh, when we load a data set a number of choices are made under the hood we can control the choice of futurization at the transformation or splitting by passing in different arguments to futurizer splitter and transformer uh, common possible choices for futurizer are ecfp graph which makes circular fingerprint graph con which produces a convolution which futurizes the data point by making a convolution molecular futurizer when you pass the string weave it futurizes the data point by using the weave futurizer and so on and similarly you can pass different choices for splitter like none index random scaffold stratified and so on when you pass in index the data set gets split into train valid and test by index when you pass in random for splitter the data set gets split by random choices randomly into train test and valid and so on similarly you can also pass different few different arguments to transformers so here i have shown a little example by which yeah, i am passing a different futurizer the circular fingerprint so i instead of first i am passing the futurizer ecfp and what i get is a the it what i get is a numpy array in this case the data set get futurized into a numpy array while when we passed in the convolution molecular futurizer the data set was a convolution molecular object so instead of passing a string we can also pass the futurizer object which is in case of ecf if we futurizer the futurizer object used is the circular fingerprint and again i get the same output because both are similar same so internally when i pass in ecfp the convolution the circular fingerprint futurizer is get called so similarly if i pass in weave the weave futurizer get called or that is these two are same passing in weave futurizer or the string representation for the futurizer in case you don't need to futurize the data points you can pass in the dummy futurizer object which returns the raw input without any futurization and now i will be having the raw input so the smile string so this is about loading molecule net suite of data set you can play with different choices of splitter or different transformer objects and so on so this molecule net suite of data set is like one of the best features of deepcam and you can try the following as well next like try invoking a different molecule net suite of data set and experiment with different futurizer and splitter transformer options you can create your own new model and benchmark the results using molecule net data set so if you are excited about deepcam and you have liked this tutorial video you can start deepcam on github this helps us a lot in building awareness of the deepcam project in case you are a deepcam user you can join the community via the gitter channel or the deepcam forum the deepcam gitter channel hosts a number of scientists developers and enthusiasts for using deepcam you can join the conversation post questions and so on the same as with forum you can just say hello over there thank you